We are now almost at the end of March, and for a sports fan, it's an exciting season as we're right in the middle of March Madness College basketball, and, and not less than a month, the Ohio State football spring game is coming. We also have uh, opening day for baseball in a few weeks. And uh, thinking about baseball, I was reminded of one of the great baseball players of the past named Yogi Berra. Uh, Yogi Berra won 10 World Series as he played for the New York Yankees. And Berra was once asked what he would do if he found a million dollars. Well, he said, I'd find the fellow who lost it, and if he was poor, I'd give it back. I, I, think about that. I wonder what you would do, fill in the blank. If they were poor, I'd give it back. If not, what would you do with a million dollars? Now, I admire the honesty, uh, it, but I also like the question that what would he do with something very special with it? Here at Tri Village, uh, many of us through the years, leaders and those that have been serving faithfully at Tri Village through the years, have found out something special, and that's that God wants a relationship with each and every one of us and loves and cares for each and every one of us so much. And so we want to celebrate that, and we've been doing that with the, the values here at, here at Tri Village. We started a sermon series on Tri Village's new values, and we don't want to celebrate this not only in these church walls, but also beyond. The first week of the sermon series, there was a phrase that shared, values are like the feathers on an arrow. They help guide the arrow towards its target, which is its mission. And, and the mission has already been really established for us. Matthew 28 and the New Testament, Jesus shares pretty clearly that we are to go out and, and preach, to share about Jesus to all people and to share about the things that Jesus did and to baptize others. Uh, the way that we've summarized this for our mission here at Tri Village is that our new mission statement is to we, we exist to connect all people to Jesus and to one another. So today we're going to look at another one of those, those values, those feathers that will help guide us to that mission of connecting with Jesus and to one another. So if you have a Bible, open them to the book of Hebrews. We'll be in Hebrews chapter 10, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 through 25. The words will also be on the screen this morning. Now many will notice that the first word that we'll read in our text today is the word, therefore. Now, there's just kind of a rule for Bible reading that, that states that when you see a therefore, you have to look to see what the word is therefore. And, and so it's important for us to understand that before we begin the text today, there were many verses, in fact, much of Hebrews, uh, talking about the, the concept in the Old Testament of sacrifices. Many people would have to, to sacrifice something in order to be made right with God. But we, we find in so many words that the Old Testament sacrifices just couldn't make people right with God. There was no, no sacrifice good enough. There, there was only one, and that was Jesus himself. And so the therefore refers to once Jesus died on the cross for us, what is now to happen with our life? The therefore is with Jesus and what he did for us, what does it mean in our lives? So Hebrews 10, verses 19 through 25. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain, that is the body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full insurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly in the hope we profess for he who promises faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. This morning we're going to see from this text that we have a destination to pursue. And in that destination, there's a mode that we can use to get to this destination. And so in this Hebrews passage, we see this destination that we're challenged to pursue. See, in the Old Testament, there had been a place called the Holy of Holies or the Most Holy Place. Uh, that was a place that the priest could only go into once a year. There was curtains protecting it. The Ark of the Covenant was at the center of it, and it represented God, uh, God's presence with the people. But again, the priest could only go in once a year to offer a sacrifice to make people right 
with God. That was the culture in the Old Testament. But then this text shares that when Jesus died, the curtain of the temple was torn. It's the idea that now we all have access to God. Each and every one of us can not only have access to God, but God has access and wants us to be with him. And so this text does remind us of this destination that we're to pursue. There's really two parts of it. Verse 22 shares the first part, and it challenges us to draw near to God. It's the reminder that Jesus died, and those that have accepted this truth and begin living for Jesus are now clean. We're, for, we're forgiven. We can be bold now to share of our shortcomings, our failures, and also share in faith and hope because we're already saved. We have access to God already. We don't need to go through hoops or do more sacrifices. We have access to God. So we're challenged to draw near to God. But the second challenge comes in verse 24 with the phrase, let us spur one another toward love and good deeds. It's the challenge to draw near to others. What does this destination sound like? A little bit like our mission statement to me, right? To con- we exist to connect all people to Jesus and to one another. Now, there's some interesting observations from the second part of drawing near to others uh, the, the phrase love and good deeds, uh, it, we're challenged to spur one another on towards this. Now, another word for spur could be to stir, as you would stir a drink uh, or, or mix a drink, stirring. Uh, but the original Greek word actually meant convulsion or to shake. So we're actually challenged to shake one another, not in a harmful way, but, but shake and encourage one another to continue pursuing God and meeting with one another. Now, we don't know the complete t- context, but evidently the early church was having problems with people not showing up consistently for worship. Maybe it was because of fear of persecution. We don't, we don't know. But as what we do know is the author challenged, spur one another on, shake one another up in, in order that they can continue to grow closer to God. And so the destination is that we're challenged to draw near to God and draw near to one another. And one mode, one way that we can work to draw closer to God and to one another is through the value this morning that we're discussing, and that's transparency. So one, one mode, one way we can get to this destination is by being transparent. Now, what, it, what is transparency? The root of the English word that we have uh, means uh, literally shining through. And now already we've gone to a Greek word and we have the root of our own old English word. We have language school here this morning. I know all of you came for that uh, this morning. Uh, but transparency literally means shining through. Transparency is being able to see something, see an image that's inside of something as a light shines through it. So light will shine through, revealing what's behind something. In the spiritual sense, Trans- transparency is being real. It's being real and honest and open with God and ourselves. This may include sharing about failures, maybe sh- sharing about doubts we have. But as we are honest and forthcoming, it, there's a unique way that God can use our honesty and our openness. Transparency can r- lead to really powerful situations in our life. I found out this week about a story from Wayne Wayne Smith. Wayne Smith was a minister at Southland Christian Church for 40 years. And when Wayne started leading the church, there was 150 in attendance in the first service. But by the time he retired, there was 3,700 people, roughly, that attended the first service. Now, Smith Smith passed away a few years ago. But today, Southland Christian Church is over 12,000 in attendance at multiple campuses. But years ago, Smith attended a conference in Georgia. And Wayne Smith, being from a bigger church, was the more educated uh, minister of of the bunch as he was sharing with really many country ministers uh, from rural Georgia. But Smith said an interesting phrase in one of his talks. He shared, men, I'm in trouble. So men of my church took me out to eat the other day and they told me my preaching was shallow and I needed to study more. And now I'm hurting. He was transparent that day, and those at the conference began to minister to Wayne throughout that conference. They ministered and served him, and in return, he began to serve and care for them. But it was his transparency that encouraged them to realize that they weren't alone when receiving criticism. Transparency can be very powerful when we open up to God and one another. Retired minister Bob Russell shared, If you pretend to be perfect, people admire you at a distance for a while. But if you're transparent, they'll love you up close for a long time. Transparency can can be valuable, but there's also limitations to it. Transparency takes courage. 
It can be hard to share with someone else. It, it causes us to be vulnerable. It, it may be hard to share with someone else. It, it, to admit our mistakes, to admit that we may not have all the answers can be tough. Sometimes even a side effect could be because of our honesty and openness, somebody might actually use against us what we, we shared it, to be vulnerable. And, and so there may be a place sometimes to share some of your biggest struggles in, in order to connect with one another, but sometimes that can end disastrous. But with courage, God can also use our openness and transparency as well. I was thinking this past week in John chapter 4 in the New Testament, the story of a, a, a person that we only know as the woman at the well, but Jesus had a conversation with a woman that was very, very flawed. That's evidence from John chapter four, as she had been with several men in her life and she was living with somebody that wasn't her husband. And Jesus had a conversation with her. But then as what's interesting to me is at the end of the chapter, many people from the town come to believe in Jesus. Now, Jesus did have a conversation with the woman, but we find that it wasn't Jesus that actually led the people to know more. It was the woman. It was the woman's story being honest and open with what Jesus had done in her life. I think of the Apostle Paul, who wrote more than half the New Testament. He planted many, many churches, and his letters throughout the New Testament frequently mention his weaknesses. It mentions his flaws, but yet he also is honest and open that while he is flawed, he needs God in his life. Transparency also sometimes needs a filter. We cannot share everything with everyone. I, w I remembered my college days this week, and I was in a traveling drama team, and we did several skits that we would perform on Sunday mornings at churches, and one of the skits I performed was called Love Boot Camp. Now, Love Boot Camp was a little bit of a play on military and soldiers going through uh, basic training. However, it wasn't to be a soldier. It was to be a better husband. And one of the lines the drill sergeant asked of us as he had a cutout of a woman with a, a rolling pin, he would hold it in our face and in drill sergeant fashion would say, soldier, your wife just asked you if she's getting fat. What do you say? And the next line was me. And I said, uh, you look about the same to me. Now, I had this big cutout woman with a, with a rolling pin, mean face looking in, into my face. It was very, uh, there was some fear I still remember from that uh, cutout woman. But being honest in that moment, eh, you know, maybe not the right thing. And, and the skit continues to work at you know, husbands being able to love and care for their wives where they're at. Being honest, being open, but sometimes maybe there's different ways to go about it. Um, Proverbs 21, 23 shares, he who guards his mouth and his tongue keeps himself from calamity. And so there, there's certainly a benefit to being honest and open, but sometimes we have to have a filter. Sometimes we can share with a small group what we can't share with a bigger group or what we might be able to share on a Sunday morning. Jesus himself did not share everything with everybody. Uh, hours before Jesus was to be crucified on the cross, he was on trial. In fact, didn't answer some of the questions when he, when he was asked. He, he was silent. There's times where Jesus uh, asked for people not to share about the miracles that he had done. Sometimes he left crowds. Jesus did not always answer and give all the information. And David Faust, past president of Cincinnati Christian University and current minister, had some phrases about uh, how to have a filter with transparency I thought were helpful. It's from the book, The Character of Christ. Uh, one phrase Faust shared was, be honest with all, be transparent to some, be vulnerable with a few. So try to be open and share honestly our mistakes, our shortcomings, perhaps our fear, uh, as we can with everybody, but give more details to perhaps maybe an inner circle of friends, maybe it's some close family, uh, some that are, you're connected to in a spiritual sense, but only share what, what's deepest with just, with just a few. I like the other phrase, share what you must with those you trust. So there's limitations with transparency, and one practical way that we can begin working on being transparent is to actively participate in a life group here at Tri-Village. Now, you won't be sharing all at once, all, all of your life details, but over time, you can begin to share and open up what God is doing for you, uh, how you need God's help, but as you share, others will share as well. It takes time, but being in a life group can be such a practical way to be transparent and real with one another. What, what are qualities of transparency? Well, one quality is that we 
can have humility. That we can admit that we cannot do everything by ourselves. That we do need God in our lives. It can be easier on this life journey sometimes with a community. Uh, Paul had several companions on his missionary journeys throughout the New Testament. Jesus himself had a close group of disciples, but we even know from other biblical texts that there were friends uh, of the ministry that would provide a place for Jesus and his disciples to stay. Uh, Part of being transparent is being able to admit our doubts and our failures, not to degrade ourselves, but to just share we need God and we need help in our lives. Now, summers often can be busy and in a different way, especially in the ministry. There's mission trip opportunities, there's church camps, there's vacations, there's conferences. And this past summer, we had three deaths on Megan's side of the family, one of which happened when I was actually gone on a mission trip. And we had to admit during that time that we needed some help. We had to ask family members, of course, but we also called upon our life group here at Tri-Village. We had to ask some members of our group if they could help us uh, move, move items and, and pray for us and, and, and serve us in this time. We had to ask uh, uh, for rides uh, to give to other friends and family in this time. And it, it was hard because it was hard on us going through this season, but we had to be open and transparent. We cannot do it by ourselves. We need help. And thankfully, our life group was a great resource to go through in this time. Another quality of transparency is honesty. One of the most practical ways we can be transparent, uh, both good and bad, is in our honesty. How do we live on a day-to-day basis? Now, sometimes the most uh, complete honesty can, can come from a child, as can on the other end can come from complete lies from a child. Uh, but uh, last year, I remember having a conversation uh, with my daughter, Hannah. Uh, she's three, and a very open conversation. Megan had taken her son to the bus stop, and I was at the breakfast table lengthwise across from Hannah. And she was just talking and talking and talking, talking about the day, talking about the bus stop, talking about Levi going to school, uh, talking about uh, my wife, Megan, talking about me. And then she just stopped. She looked at me and she said, what's wrong? You don't talk anymore? And I said, well, I haven't had a chance to talk. You've been talking the whole time. And then when Megan got back uh, from taking Levi to the bus, uh, I summarized the story to Megan and Hannah overheard it and said, yeah, what's wrong? Are your batteries broke? (laughs) Uh, There's some honesty that that a child can share uh, in its most pure form. Uh, But honesty can be a great way to demonstrate transparency in our lives. Maybe it's with finances, that we find a positive use of the way to use financial resources that God has given us, that we're able to give back to God what is his, not taking advantage of finances. Maybe if we're in a company, we don't take back more than what we deserve, but we can use finances to provide for our family or use to serve others. There's also an honesty in relationships, a relational integrity, so to speak. David and Jonathan in the Old Testament is a great example of two men that really cared for one another. They they shared what was going on with one another. They were there for support for one another. We also see wonderful images of relational integrity, even with the Apostle Paul's life. Uh, Paul uh, served a lot with a minister named Timothy, And Paul believed in this relational transparency that he would mentor Timothy, that they would be frank with one another, that they would give practical advice, that they would help each other with emotional makeup. Now, Paul knew Timothy's family. Uh, Paul and Timothy knew each other so well that they were aware of one another's travel plans and physical ailments. Paul felt free to give Timothy practical advice about how to deal with stomach problems and frequent illness. Timothy evidently shared openly with Paul about the details of ministry and the challenge he faced. Uh, Paul also shared about his disappointments. Paul challenged and encouraged Timothy when he saw areas where his apprentice struggled. These two men prayed for each other. They poured out their hearts to one another. Paul even knew what made Timothy cry and recalled the tears that were shed when they parted from one another. And so this type of sincere relationship comes from people being honest with one another, honest in their relationships. And indeed, Jesus working in us, in us may be revealed in a more thorough way when we're able to be honest in our actions each and every day. Another quality of transparency is that it, it should also be helpful. What we share with our words and actions should be helpful and useful when we share it. Ephesians 4.29 shares, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful in building others up according to their needs that it might benefit those who listen. A few verses down, the Apostle Paul continued to write, 
Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ forgave you. Walk in the way of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. So we're challenged to watch what we say. Don't say it unless it can be helpful. If it can help somebody to be stronger and to be uh, better in life, then we can watch how we say it. I like the further clarification that Paul goes into to share that we're to not only let unwholesome talk come out of our mouths, but what we share should be like Jesus. It should be the actions of Jesus that guide our lives. So there's certainly very helpful qualities of being transparent from humility, honesty, to being helpful. But it's also important in our lives to remember compassion, to understand that all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. And, and certainly others we see throughout life may have a board in their eyes, so to speak, but all of us have at least a log. We all have something that we struggle with. I, this past week, I asked a question to some close family and friends about how they have seen God work in transparency in their life. And one of my family members shared this. I find that through my own transparency, I have had times where I've helped others because I have been there. It's made me a better person because through my mistakes in life, I learned not to judge. God has made me stronger because I've, ma I've made mistakes and learned life isn't always easy. I never sugarcoated my childhood. It was only through the grace of God that I did not become an alcoholic. Appreciate the transparency, but that they learned from, from their own lives. There was times where they stumbled, but they were learned from it. They were able to share with other people and, and to know that they needed God in their lives. And so part of transparency is having that bigger perspective, that we would understand that there's hurting people all around us, and sometimes being transparent is noticing that and then taking action in their lives. I like what Bob Russell shared about being sensitive to the needs around us. Russell wrote, How sensitive are you to the feelings of people around you? All around us every day are people who need understanding. All around us are people who hurt. Sometimes they put on masks, but people are going through divorce. They're going through an alcohol or drug addiction or they're going through severe financial problems. Even if they're not, other irritating problems nag at people every day. If we're not perceptive, if we don't look beneath the surface, we're not going to anticipate their feelings or be responsive to their needs. Like that thought that there's people all around, sometimes it might be us, and therefore part of transparency is to, to notice when people are in need and be able to take action when it comes up into our lives. But there's also a compassion, again, of not being judgmental, that sometimes through being transparent, somebody may share details of their lives that they don't need to be judged or lashed out to, but we need to have compassion and love and grace, just as God has for each and every one of us. And we started our time together talking about that idea from Hebrews that we've only gained access to God because of Jesus' death on the cross, that when Jesus died, the curtain of the temple tore which means we have that access to God. God has complete access to us. We have complete access now to God. But sometimes when it comes to transparency, perhaps we need to tear the masks off in our lives, that we need to tear what's on the outside in order to reveal what's deep and what's inside to those around us. Sometimes being sincere in our walk may give new life to somebody who's struggling it may give support to others who need encouragement. And sometimes it may help us by being honest to seek God more. I found this past week that there's language experts who study and estimate how many words we say each day. And there's estimates that we say 16,000 words per day. So in a span of 80 years, that can be 467 million words. And now some, uh, for example, preachers that continue to talk and talk and talk, maybe more. Uh, somebody rebuttaled and said, I think I might be even beyond the millions in words. Uh, some may speak less, but one way or the other, many of us will have millions of words that come out of our mouth by the time we pass on from this earth. So have you thought about out of the million of the words that we say, how many will we remember when we're gone? And it's a reminder that our words do matter very much. What we say does have an effect on other people's lives, but it's not just about words. I've heard the sentiment before, it's not just what is taught, but what is caught, which is a reminder that people will see what you do. So our words do matter, and our actions do matter as well. 
And sometimes being transparent is the best way uh, for us to share not only God's work in our lives, but also help us grow closer to God as well. So I wonder, with transparency, how do people see Tri Village as being transparent? How do those that are here on a Sunday morning, what would they say we are as far as on the transparency level? How about the community around? Would the community around us say that we're transparent, that we're real, that we're honest, that we share, but that we also rely on God and rely on others? You know, God is very transparent with us. And there's one more scripture I'd like to read this morning. If you have your Bibles, open them to John. John chapter 3. I want to read about, a little bit about God's transparency with us. John chapter 3, and we'll begin in verse 16. John chapter 3 is a conversation that Jesus had with somebody, a spiritual conversation about God's work and their lives and how God's kingdom worked. But listen to what John 3 shares. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for the fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly what they have done has been done in the sight of God. I love the transparency about God's work in our lives in this text. Because of God's love for us, he became transparent by sending Jesus to this earth. That Jesus would show a life of love, of, of compassion to, one, to, to others, but that also Jesus would be beaten, would be teased, would be ridiculed, would be ultimately hum humiliated on the cross for each and every one of us. We find the transparency that God didn't send Jesus to punish us. He didn't send Jesus, Jesus to condemn us, but sent Jesus to give us eternal life because he loved and cared for us. We get a little bit more honesty, though, that those that accept Jesus get eternal life, but that those that don't make that decision uh, have rejected God's work. But can you imagine the transparency that Jesus himself had as he was beaten and broken for us? In a few min min minutes, we're going to take communion. When we do, hold the emblems, and we'll remember Jesus' humility and transparency in that moment. But you know, sometimes to have life, it takes some death. And just as the example with Jesus dying on the cross to rise again, sometimes in transparency, it might be having some death to share some of the openness, some of the hurts that we have, some of the failures we might have. But when we share, God may use those words to heal wounds, to encourage one another, and to strengthen ourselves. How can we at Tri Village be transparent, not just in these walls, but in the community beyond? Let's pray. God, we thank you so much that we can come together each and every week to read from the Bible. We thank you for the powerful words that are in there. And, and this morning that we can talk about that idea that we all have access to you, but that we can be transparent and real with one another. I ask that you would help us and challenge us that we would find more ways to be sincere and honest to you, but also to one another that we would find a group of people that we can connect with, that we can share with, that we would encourage somebody else's walk, but also we would be encouraged when we hear the story of others. And I'm so thankful that you were so transparent with us, that you would become human, that you would walk a life of love, of compassion, and then be so tr transparent and open as you died on the cross for us. Help us daily. To, to die to ourself, to let you and others in that we might be able to grow closer to you. So in Jesus' name we pray, amen.